Good evening, everybody. Um, the Newton Planning Board would like, would like to hold a public meeting on Tuesday, June 13th, 2023 at 7 p.m. at the Newton Town Hall. Um, first order, I would like to sweep the flag. The Pledge of Allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of, of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to, to the, the Republic, Republic for which, which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The um, first item on the agenda is Mr. Ryan Norman of Newton, New Hampshire, requests a design review for a seven lot subdivision at 17 Thornell Road in Newton, New Hampshire. The properties are referenced as tax map 12, block one, lots four and four dash three. Um, prior to this meeting, the applicant requested a continuance. So um, at this point, I don't think we're gonna discuss anything for this. You do, do need to have a vote to continue okay. it. Um, so I would like to request a motion to continue Mr. Norman's request. Motion to um, give Mr. Ryan Norman um, his request for a continuance on tax map 12 block one lots four and four dash three and that's you, you need a date in 27 thank you meetings. yes we don't need a finding of facts correct no you just need to state what date and then the case number second ms white yes mr eddie Aye. Mr. Marshall? Aye. Mr. Ryan? Aye. Ms. Eddy? Aye. Mr. Moran? Aye. That's unanimous. Thank you. I'm not sure if anybody wants to leave or... I have a question. Will we be notified and certified mail when it's next on the agenda? You will not be notified via certified mail, but it's on the agenda two weeks from today. Week yep. Okay. Same time, same place. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> hey. Nobody wants to stay for the rest. <laughs> was, this, was this something we said? <laughs> Thank you for coming. Okay. We're glad you're here. <laughs> Second on the agenda tonight is Terex USA LLC of Westport, Connecticut, request a public hearing on an amended site plan for 22 Whittier Street, Newton, New Hampshire. The lot is referenced as Tax Map 6, Block 13, Lot 2. Ms. Rodden, do you have anything to add? Um, I do think that the application is complete. There are a few items that are stated from the town engineer's letter that I do think warrant discussion and need to be included um, in the applicant's packet at a future point, but I would let them speak to those. Perfect. Um, do we take jurisdiction prior to them speaking, correct? You don't have to. You can hear from them first if you would like. Would you like to present your application? Hmm. <laughs> take jurisdiction, then open the public hearing. Okay. Jim wants to take jurisdiction. Can I have a motion to take jurisdiction? <laughs> motion to take Second. jurisdiction. Yeah. Seconded by Barbara. Yep. Thank you, Barbara. Ms. White. Aye. Mr. Eddy. Aye. Mr. Marshall. Aye. Mr. Ryan. Aye. Ms. Eddy. Aye. And Mr. Moran. Aye. The floor is yours. Yeah, you just got to be in front of the mic so people on the 
Zoom land can hear you, but right there is totally fine. Or you could flip it. We have the drawings in front of us, so you can flip it around if you want. If somebody in the audience wants to oh, okay. take a peek. Okay, uh, good evening, I'm Mike Sievert. I'm with um, Horizons Engineering, and um, I'm representing uh, uh, Terex LLC, USA LLC this evening, and uh, Michael is here uh, from the operations, or, or the uh, management position there, so <laughs> um, if there's questions that I can't answer about the specific operation or uh, <coughs> happens in the building and so forth, then I'll let uh, Michael do that. Um, so you have the plans in front of you, so we have an existing conditions plan, it's a quite a large parcel and they, um, they also uh, obviously have an operation out there that you already know about and that building is shown um, on the southerly side of the plan. And the proposal in front of you this evening is uh, to add the 50 foot wide by 300 foot long um, uh, metal frame building and uh, pre-engineered building um, and and the work that will be done inside that building is moving the um, sandblasting and the painting over to that building and so the flow of work uh, on the equipment will be uh, it'll start out in the large building uh, move out to the I guess the west and then come in the westerly end or northwesterly end of the building and then move through the building in a southerly direction and then come back out um, of that long narrow building, the new building, and then go back into the big building for the final um, processing through and then out again to the uh, northwest in that back area to be tested and then uh, shipped out off the site from that point, like right there. Um, I believe that the some of this operation happens in the big building now and running out of space, and so the reason for this is to move uh, the, part of this process into the other building. Um, we try to put it parallel to that building and, and close to, to keep that circulation working there. Um, there's a we ended up putting a um, like a kind of a gravel road to go around the building just in case in, of, of uh, emergency vehicles and so forth so they could circle all the way around the building um, but mainly that won't really be used that road to the uh, northerly side of the building and then um, because of the grades there's there's an existing uh, culvert that goes kind of between the what will now be between the two buildings and because of the grades and the access road going up into that building on the northwesterly end, we're adding a catch basin to that system because we're going to trap water in there and, and <coughs> then it'll continue out through into the wetland area where it already goes now. And then a new pond is added um, on the northerly side of the building to collect um, all the runoff from the new impervious area. And that outlets to that same wetland uh, across to the uh, westerly side. Um, this, this building will be tied into electrical and water uh, from the existing building, but it'll have its own new septic system out to the north, uh, northwest corner there. Um, and, and there's um, a few employees working in this building, less than five or five. Ish. Okay. And so there'll just be a small, you know, bathroom in there. So a very, uh, I didn't, I haven't designed that septic system yet. I'm kind of waiting till we get here, but just that minimum 300 gallon per day uh, septic system will be designed for that. So, um, so I don't have any, I, if I can answer questions or I could uh, address the questions from the engineer or Sure. I'd like I'd like those addressed. The 
from the engineer, the questions that he brought up, oh, if sure. you could please. Yep. Do you, you have a copy of that? I do. Okay, yep. perfect. Yep. So we've already made all the changes, but I guess we missed the deadline for getting them back in here. Um, uh, but we have, so the first one uh, was a question about. Just before you say it, I haven't received any response on those right. changes. Right, right, right. I don't think it, I don't think it went back. That that was what I. Okay. I, um, I really, I, it, I'd appreciate receiving that. Yeah, yeah. No, I haven't sent. We haven't sent it to the engineer yet either. So I was going to send it to you. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I was just saying that we already made all the changes to the plans, and then we'll get that back to you. Um, so that first one that I think, I think he's talking about the. Um, Will, can you uh, turn and, and get around the um, building on that gravel drive that we have for emergency vehicles to go back there? And our response is, and, and I believe it's this little tight turn at the very um, uh, southerly end there. And um, our intent was just to provide that access if necessary to go around there, but people w won't really be utilizing that access. Um, I could uh, flare that um, access out of the gravel road to the new paved access road coming out of the southerly end to make that a little bit more accessible there. I was trying to be careful to stay out of that uh, wetland setback right there, and that's why we kind of tried to keep it so tight. But um, I can try to widen that out a little bit, and that's how we were going to respond uh, to him. Um, test bit information, um, I, there isn't any test bit information on, on the plan. I, I did do a test bit for the septic. Um, it's very close to the uh, detention pond there, so I don't know if we necessarily need to do another one. Um, the water table is about um, uh, five and a half feet deep, uh, so there's no problem uh, for the leach field, of course. It's a, it's a, a sandy material, like a... Um, a sandy loam, loamy material. Um, and so up where that detention pond is, and, and it's a, uh, an extended wet detention pond, so the very bottom of it will be wet, and it, that it'll be very close to the water table. We do have a liner called out there, and I don't, I'm not sure we necessarily need it because the water table is going to be really close there, so that would keep it wet. Um, but we can... Uh, kind of address that and, and, and let him know uh, whether or not we're going to keep that in there. But he was asking if there were any, was any um, test bit information done, which I'll provide to him. Um, he, the engineer was asking about a, I guess there was a stone emergency spillway referenced in there, and I think it's been removed, and the emergency spillway is the uh, graded inlet of the outlet control structure of that pond. Uh, so that's how that will be set. Um, other calculations uh, for the exfiltration, he was um, concerned that we were using exfiltration but had a liner in there and what we were saying was that only the um, previous area above the liner uh, would be used for the infiltration. So we've revised the calculations for the uh, pond, which has um, fairly minimal um, infiltration anyway. Um, and it really uh, didn't change the model. We, we meet the requirements or exceed the requirements for um, meeting the um, lessening runoff from the new site, and it's still the same or slightly greater even that we, we meet it. Um, there was a question about the two-inch PVC pipe, and on the, if you look on, I think it's C500. There's a two-inch pipe uh, that, that is part of the inlet. It's a low inlet. So if the pond is working in a, in a low storm, that low inlet would would take the water out of there right down towards the bottom or the top of the, the wet area that's going to stay wet. So if water comes in a small storm, it takes it out of there. That was modeled as an orifice and not a pipe. 
And so there's just a little bit different hydraulics between uh, a two and a half foot pipe and a orifice that's right in the side of, of the um, structure. So we've re, re modeled that in, in HydroCAD to make that pipe. And, it, and no change to the, to the, um, to that um, drainage analysis. And there were some elevations that needed to be changed or updated between the plan and the HydroCAD model, so that's been done. And then there's, I think, this number seven, uh, they're, they're calling that this catch basin that's like in between the, the buildings, not the one in the pond, but the one we're kind of putting in in line to collect that water that we're going to be kind of ponding right there because of the grades. Um, <clears throat> the way he designed it was put the uh, drain over top of it and just cut into the pipe and tie it in. And I, I don't, the engineer didn't really like that idea, so we're just going to change it into a catch basin with a sump, and it'll meet your requirements. So that's what we've done. Um, and I think the number eight says there's an existing catch basin on the site, but I think the confusion is that that might have gotten left on that catch basin that we're actually calling out as a proposed catch basin. So I'll clarify that to the engineer and say there's no change there. And then we've taken, obviously we recycled <laughs> some of these uh, stormwater reports and we had one that said Rye, New Hampshire, so we'll change that to Newton, but uh, um, that, that's it. So we've done all of that information and we have the plans ready to go, and I'll, I can get them back to the engineer um, even tomorrow, probably, or to, to, to the town tomorrow, and then go from there, so. Thank you. Yep. Um, again. I did speak to Mike Vignali, <coughs> who told me that it appeared, he received the document that I didn't. He said that it appeared that they addressed everything. I asked him if that constituted his clean letter. I have not heard re a response from him. That's why on my recommendations is specifically to have a clean letter from the town engineer. Okay. From, so you're, you're requesting that Mike McNally provide a letter saying that the, his comments have been addressed. Jen, you have so typically if there are relatively minor tweaks that need to be made to a plan set that are sp like specific engineering things that don't have big changes on the plan, um, the board has in the past been okay with approving a conditional approval with a clean letter from the town engineer, which basically means all of the issues have been addressed to his satisfaction. Um, that's, it's not uncommon to do. This may be a very applicable case to do that unless there are other concerns that the board hears from or any of the abutters that may be present. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, generally in my opinion, well, first off, like, I appreciate a thorough clean set of drawings. Mm -hmm. We haven't had the opportunity to look at many of these. So um, I think it allowed our engineer to actually review, like he actually got into the drainage analysis and reviewed and provided some Fairly detailed comments, yep. um, you know, at least in my opinion, uh, the difference between a two inch PVC pipe and a two inch orifice. Th th it's not going to change anything. Yeah. It, it, and you know, I understand why. Yep. Um, you know, this isn't going to DES, it's under 100,000 square feet, so you don't need AOT. Um, so he did go through and do a fairly detailed analysis or review of the, the drainage, which is yep. nice because the state's not going to do it. Yep. Um, so that's my comments on that. I'm not sure if anybody else on the board has any other comments or questions before we open it up to the public. Sorry, Jim. You didn't receive in your board packets, I, and I did receive for the file. I actually have the maintenance. For, oh, the O&M yeah. maintenance, yep. the stormwater uh, ma maintenance or oh, program. I, program. I mean, yeah. I, I think I saw that. Excuse me? Yeah, I, I've also I've seen, seen that, so. Oh, okay. It complies with your regulations. Yeah, right. And we didn't receive a copy of the drainage analysis. Um, I think it's on the website, though. Oh, uh, maybe that's where I saw it. I flipped through it, and I was like, okay, this is pretty oh, good. Th th this was actually a separate document on maintaining the detention. Mm -hmm. I've never seen that. I'd like to see the board request those more often, because it just 
whether it gets done or not is not the board's concern. It's, but it, at least it shows proof that they knew what they had to do. So maintenance has been part of your requirements since what, 2018 when you adopted your stormwater. It's usually buried in your drainage reports. Exactly. It's not necessarily a separate document. Yeah, it's but just you the have way our, they're oh, set up, it's, at least when I do them, they're in the back appendix, like J or something. <laughs> It, it was just, it was nice to see it as a separate document because that one I could flip through and it made sense. The drainage analysis pages. Some of us enjoy them. <laughs> yeah. You know what the calculations are supposed to be. Sometimes. <laughs> It'll put you to sleep. Right? Um, I have a question. What, what are the hours of operation for this part of the addition? Um, our normal hours of operation are Monday through Thursday. Actually, I'm going to lean over to Dave. Is it six to three right now? Five to six. About five to three. Uh, we do leave Friday open for when we're behind and we need a little overtime to play catch up. So the hours would be historically, you know, five to noon on uh, Fridays, but that would typically be it. And you're not changing, you're not proposing to change any of your operations or like your hours, uh, our hours of operation are remaining the same. Correct. Okay. This is just expanding your facility or allowing you to increase production. So it, it's, it's a good time for me to kind of say this, you know, one of the key drivers of this whole entire project is right now we actually blast outside in a tent. So the worker who does that during a 110 degree day is wearing a full suit and it's probably the worst job in all of New Hampshire to do in a hot summer day. Um, so one of the main reasons we started this project was two things. One, getting that worker indoors into a, a climate controlled environment that's reasonable to work. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that <clears throat> we don't have benefits of that by retaining employees. Um, the second thing is just the environmental initiatives that we've had. You know, we have blast media kind of blowing around the site. It's everywhere. It's covering everything. So with this, we recover the media. Again, there is benefits to the business. We get to reuse the media, which financially is great. Um, but it gets all of that out of the air, and it gets all of that off the ground. So, But nothing is changing as far as our normal operation goes. It's just moving from one location to a cleaner, newer, better location. And so, being in the building, there'll be no noise, of course, because that'll keep it all controlled within the building. Inside the building that we're proposing to construct? Yes. It's going to be just a, a blast booth, full self-contained, and then a paint booth at a later date, if we can get the finances to do it, right after that, and that's it. Yeah. And those operations are currently down outside, so you're going from an... Blast is done outside, paint is done inside right now in our current production facility. Um, so that would remove out of that building and move it into this building as a self-contained blast and paint facility. So from a noise standpoint, at 5 a.m., it would be quieter there because the process would be going on inside of a building it as opposed is, to... Right now, we're at about 100 and something decibels when you're in proximity of that tent, and we project it to almost be nothing outside of the building. Okay. So massive difference. Very good. Does anybody else have any questions on the board? Barbara or Andrew? No, I'm, I'm good. Nothing for me. Uh, how about from the public? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, please state your name and your address. My name is Nancy Slomo, and I live at 24 Whittier Street and I've lived there for 32 years. They've been a great company. I just have two things. <laughs> did you get an intent to cut? Trees? Yeah. We did not. That's a no-no. <laughs> just speak thought I'd tell you. <laughs> please speak into the microphone. That's a no-no, just thought I'd tell you. You need an intent to cut. You've cut for two days, okay? Um, there's another thing. I mean, you've been a great company, everything. There is a pipe that's not on your plan <laughs> that takes the water from Whittier Street down through your facility and it dumps it out into, and it's not on that map. 
It is if I don't mind, I can show you. <laughs> it's hard to see because it's But you out. added a pipe. You didn't connect to that pipe. When you added the pipe, I don't know how many years ago, 15 years ago, you added a pipe. You didn't connect it to that pipe. There's a pipe under there that runs all the way from over here. Yeah, through here. Yeah, but you added another pipe. What happened is the end of that pipe is crushed. In that pit at the end, the end of that pipe is crushed. I've gone out there with a shovel. And this thing, you always make your leads go into that spot. I mean, I'm getting a little older to go out there with a the shovel. <laughs> and try to get that. Are you, are you referring to the entrance? Sorry, I'm just over. Yeah, yeah. there's okay. a If you a turn that, we can right see. Here. Maybe you turn that, that way. Oh, oh, okay. Wrong spot, right. all right. Make sure because I'll be flooded. <laughs> oh no, that, that's, that's that's easy enough. In the scheme of all this construction, if we can help the proper drainage and management of what's existing, yeah. please, we, we have no problem. Yeah. I, I'll inspect that tomorrow in the, in yeah. the office. And just try not to make your leaves all go down there. Down into the, the down into water there, water yeah. yeah. Okay, that's great information. I had no idea to be honest. Thank okay, you. thank you. I mean, they've been a great company. No complaints. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Jen, did you have anything to add now? No. Any other comments from the other? Yes, sir. I'm block 14. Can you just say it in the mic? Sorry, block 14. Block 14. I appreciate it. Thank you. And um, What's your name, sir? It's Al Johnson. Um, I can't tell by the elevation, but does all the water finally find its way down to the little, what do you want to call it, river? It's not a river, it's a, it's probably runoff. Gussie's Brook? Yeah. Okay. Does all the water find its way down there? Does all the water find its way down to there from what they're building? Um, I, I'll let the design engineer, you're, let me find out where you're, where you live, okay, you're I think right generally it does probably eventually get down to there. Just looking yeah, at I the mean, way outlet that. protection, the invert 122, it generally drains into that wetland area. Yeah. Well, oh. the, the thing is, is that's what I want to find out, if, as long as it doesn't make it more wet, because if I decide to develop it, and they make it more wet, then I have a lot more problems to develop. Sure, I'll speak at least in, um, based on the analysis that the applicant provided, the existing condition runoff, or the, I, let me rephrase that, the proposed condition runoff is equal to or less than the existing. Existing. So, um, they have represented, based on hydraulic and drainage calculations, that the flows will not increase. Um, there's a, at least in my opinion, that it's a minor increase in impervious area, and they've been, they're proposing a um, detention basin and some catch basins to mitigate or to meter that flow out to where it previously went. I just wanted to make sure that um, I've done work for these people before years ago, so I just, you know, nothing against them. I just wanted to make sure that it doesn't do anything to. It's a, it's a good point. My plot of land, yep. you know. And that's, that, that's one of the requirements. Yep. That's why we have the stormwater regulations of the community and larger projects that are about 25% larger than this are required to go to the state for their review as well. Okay. So it, this is just a little bit lower than that threshold. So, but it is something that they've reviewed. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from the public? Anybody on the internet, Zoom? No hands raised. Jen, you good? I am. This is a fairly straightforward application. 
in your board packets, I gave you recommendations for. Um, yeah, I'm going to make a conditional approval recommendation. Um, one will address which isn't here, but that um, young lady over there spoke about the pipe and the drainage can get looked at, which I'm sure is no problem, like you said. And we can look at that and see what's going on with the leaf control. That would be good. Um, and the board found the following facts concerning the application, that the plan falls within the scope of the applicable zoning and site plan regulations for an amended site plan. The plan shows a proactive attempt to mitigate any environmental issues that could be on site. The justice uh, would be served by approving the application. Conditions president, obtain all federal, state, and local permits, meet all public health and safety codes, a clean letter from the town engineer is what we talked about, that's, the, that's why it's conditional. Um, supply recordable mylars. Mylars must have all necessary professional stamps. Any state permit shall be listed on the cover or first recorded sheets of the mylars. Conditions subsequent and or ongoing shall be listed on the cover or first recorded sheet of the mylars. Conditions subsequent, all construction and landscaping shall be in accordance with the recorded site plans any changes will be needed to be approved by the planning board through an amended site plan application. Construction, site work inspection shall be con conducted by the town engineer. Copies of all as-built plans, including the constructed stormwater management system, shall be provided to the planning board. The NEPA account must be maintained to cover the cost of the town engineer's inspections until the town engineer states in writing that the project is complete. Conditions ongoing. All hazard or regulated substances on site be handled, stored, and disposed of consistent with local, state, and federal requirements. No idling of your vehicles between 7 p.m. and 7.30 a.m. I will second that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. White. Aye. Mr. Eddy. Aye. Mr. Marshawn. Aye. Mr. Ryan. Aye. Ms. Eddy. Aye. Mr. Moran. Aye. That is unanimous. Awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you. Good job. Thank you, thank gentlemen, you. for your time. And thank you for coming out. Thank you. Nice to have a complete service. It, it That's is. How it's supposed to be every time. <laughs> it is. Okay. We can have the, the drawings done. Yep. Make sure they get to me. If you have any questions about what's going on, you can always come back and see us, or you can always go right there and see if you can't find him and ask him. I'm sure he'd be more than willing to help you out. No, I'm sure he won't, but <laughs> you take care. Have a good night. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Take care. Okay, next on the agenda is accepted, acceptance of the meeting minutes from May 23rd, 2023. So moved, this is Barbara. Second. Ms. White? Aye. Ms. Mr. Eddy? Aye. Mr. Marshall? Aye. Mr. Ryan? Aye. Ms. Eddy? Aye. Mr. Moran? Aye. Unanimous. Once again, this at this meeting, there are three NEPRA manifest, standard MEPRA, a closeout, and a processing fee. Sure, do we, how, how do we want to do this? How do you have your minutes written? Because I don't have my script in front of me, but. <laughs> would you like uh, me to read the numbers? Minutes? Uh, no, I can, I can. Um, <coughs> standard NEPRA manifest is for 460. Okay, 
Um, we'll start there. So can I have a motion to approve the Dnieper Manifest for 416.25? So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Ms. White? Aye. Mr. Eddy? Aye. Mr. Marshall? Aye. Mr. Ryan? Aye. Ms. Eddy? Aye. Mr. Moran? Aye. That's unanimous. Uh, second is a processing NEPRA manifest for $7.50. So moved. Second. Ms. White? Aye. Mr. Eddy? Aye. Mr. Marshall? Aye. Mr. Ryan? Aye. Ms. Eddy? Aye. Mr. Moran? Aye. That's your name. And the last NEPRA manifest is a closeout for two previous applications for the amount of $1,992.61. So um, moved. Okay. I was going to say, before we. Actually, let's. Let, yeah. I have a comment after this. Sorry. Go ahead, Bob. So, so Bob made so the motion. So moved on that. I know where you're going. <laughs> Second. Was, this, was that Mr. Eddy? Uh, Mr. Ryan. Okay. Was there a question regarding the manifest? Not a question regarding the amount. But I, I'll make my I'll, I'll make my statement after we we approve this. Okay. Ms. White. Aye. Mr. Eddy. Aye. Mr. Marshall. Aye. Mr. Ryan. Aye. Ms. Eddy. Aye. Mr. Moran. Aye. My question or comment is for these smaller applications, especially when we're holding people's money, just because of the inherent nature of this. Is there a way to reduce the application fee from like two grand when we're only gonna spend like just a couple in, hundred in, bucks? in defense of the fee schedule? When it first came in, I looked at the applicant's engineer and said you could probably get away with like six hundred bucks max. You can put in a waiver, the board can grant the waiver, and you can keep fourteen hundred. Okay. And the response was, but then if we need to go before the town engineer a couple of times, we're going to mm, be in the red. That's the reason I wouldn't lower the number on the fee schedule, but anytime something, I mean. This is a lot line a, adjustment, right? Two, two lots with Some enough addition. frontage for, yeah. for every, it didn't make sense, but they had that option and I remind people of that option. Perfect. Thank you for the explanation. Speaking of which, just because we're on the same subject, there is a NEPR account that I that was just we oh, had is that a, for a an segue? application just that was just <laughs> withdrawn. It is in when I did the NEPR statement, they ended up being in arrears seventeen dollars and seventy three cents. I've sent them an email friendly going, you know, if you bring me the money. I don't have to put this before the board. That was a week and a half ago. Motion to send them a certified letter requesting the funds, adding on the amount of the cost for said certified letter. Second. Anybody want to make any comments? I have no comment. Okay. Ms. White? Aye. Mr. Eddy? Aye. Mr. Marshawn? Aye. Ms. Eddy? Aye. Mr. Moran? Aye. And Mr. Ryan? Aye. That's unanimous. Do we have to approve your expense report? No, you just have to sign. Okay. <laughs> that one, I'll explain. People are now going to wonder. I attended the New Hampshire Housing Academy today. Um, 
and it was in Bedford, New Hampshire. So there were two in-person classes, if you will. They started at 9 o'clock in the morning, which meant leaving here before 8, and they got out around 1, which put me back here around 2. And it, the mileage generally works. It was 82 miles. So that's I was just going to say, it's also 41 miles there and 41 miles back. So Which is about an hour-ish. Yeah. On 125. Next on the... Unless it's early morning and it's raining. But that's perfectly okay. Uh, next on the agenda, Jen, do you have an update for Invest New Hampshire? Yep, just really brief for tonight. Um, so this is the housing grant. So Jim has been going to the Housing Academy, which wraps up next week, the week after. Um, I've been attending most of the sessions as well. Um, the, what I would like to do at your next meeting is to run through a couple of items. One of them being the draft of the master plan chapter that we're working on. That will include the framing of basically the background information, the data, um, so what you already have adopted in your master plan. So things like the vision that was worked on a few years ago, the land use chapter, um, to bring up to speed like where are you with support or not support or as a topic of housing with related items. And then I want to show you the draft survey I've put together. I'm using sort of a prototype that I've come taken from another community that's doing the survey right now. Newton has the, I'll say, the benefit of having done a few surveys over the past three years. So we've done two surveys in three years. Um, so we have a lot of folks that have signed up that are interested in planning things from those surveys, so that's kind of a good <coughs> starting point, and we've done a lot of outreach on your social media, on your website, word of mouth, flyers, um, but I want to run the survey by you. Because of the time of year, part of our discussion needs to be when to actually launch the survey. Um, we can do it over the summer. If we do that, we need to do it basically the entire summer because people are busy this time of year. The other option is to work on the survey and then hold it for until probably the end of August, um, early part of September, and have it run in September. Either way is fine. It's, it's just more of a thought of how you think folks in Newton might best respond. Um, I don't think we're going to get the 500 or so we got when we did your overall t community survey. We got around 200 when we did the land use. We would probably expect around that for housing, although housing is a very hot topic, so people tend to have very strong opinions. <laughs> is the survey ready to roll out, or is it um, something we have to develop for? No, so it's, it's probably 80% developed at this okay. point. I mean, there's certainly, I need to get your input. There might be tweaks we make to it, but the the draft for you to review is about 80%. It'll be 90% by the time I show it to you um, in two weeks. But it, it's more of that timing, so it's fine for us to do all the, I'll say the front end work, but then if we need to hold the survey for a couple of months, just when people are paying more attention to things, um, we can do that. And it still fits within all of the work that we're doing. It just means that the draft master plan chapter, we won't be able to do a lot of work on until we get more of that feedback. So they all kind of tangle into each other, but that's, I think, where we'll be for the next meeting. So those got completed online? Is that where they fill them out? Or? So the survey is an online survey, but we can make paper copies. Mm -hmm. We typically don't, whenever I do a community survey, maybe 5% of the responses we get are paper surveys. Um, if they're general community surveys, like right now you guys are doing the age-friendly program through my office, and there was a survey, that tends to have a higher percentage that are paper mm -hmm. surveys just because of the targeted audience. But it is predominantly online. We've gotten really good responses in Newton. Um, maybe to generate interest, we could make like a flyer for town day or for voting day or something, just so people actually yep, so see I, it, know where to look for it, and see what it's all about. So what I typically do is I do a flyer okay. that has like a little blurb about it the, and has the website, the QR code. You know, it says yeah. who's putting the survey on, why you're doing it. For more information, go 
yeah. go to this website. Yeah. So it gives all the information, but then we do a social media post. It usually has a article on the town website or as the like latest news on your town website. Your social media accounts, your unofficial and official ones are the best publicity. But um, having things at like the transfer station is also really handy. Oh yeah. Most people tend to go to the transfer station yeah. over the summer, so. Yeah. But we can work on the timing of that. Sometimes that's why, like, once you get past summer, it's a little bit better. Yeah, we can talk to Trish about maybe uh, posting it real quick on uh, the sign. Yep. Um, we've also done on your cable access before having yeah. an announcement on that. So. Maybe you could dro drop one in when people re-register uh, their vehicles. Just drop it in with that or something, too. Typically, we, with tax clerks, they don't like to clutter what they're sending out. Oh, yeah. um, I will say I've always wanted to have a Skywriter do it, but <laughs> no one's taken me up on that. But if there's other venues that folks yeah. have that they think might work, I will say typically schools are also not able to send oh. out that kind of information, but the library has been really helpful in the past about getting the word out as well. Okay. So. Good yeah, I, I think probably like you were saying, probably more like towards the end of August, September would be the best way to go. When's the baseball open at, at Greeny Park? That is bumping that day. Those kind of events I can put together, quite frankly, like little postcards. Someone that's willing to go around and like hand it out to people and then they can take it on their phone really easily. It, it's designed to be easy like that. Um, can be really good prospects as well. Or just like, I'm thinking if we can coordinate and move the sign. Oh, I see. Oh, so yeah, in different locations of town, right? Yeah. Yes, Jim. And one of the things that I'll do for that is I'll do a large item to put on the bulletin board downstairs with a large QR code. Because sometimes when we shrink them, they don't work right. Um, like I did for. Ms. Rowden's last um, survey, and that makes it easy. People can stop, they can read it, they can point their camera, and just go on their merry way, or take it while they're waiting for Mary Jo to get, you know, wait on somebody else at her window. Yeah, the surveys are designed to be either people can do really fast responses, it's multiple choice, basically. Um, but there's always a spot where you can put in comments, and then there are also questions in there that try to get people to write a little bit more. Um, yeah. That gives you, gives you a little bit of richer answers. Um, we've also been using some mapping-based questions that half the population can do, and the other half has a hard time with, but it's basically dragging pins onto a Google map. And you can have it so, you know, more housing would be okay here. I don't want any housing here. I don't like this housing development, but this style is okay. So there's, you can do fancier things like that. Some of the population has a hard time with those questions, but they're towards the end. So if you don't answer that, it's not a big deal. We capture everything else. And in the same vein, I'll move on to the next item, which is the age-friendly community. There is a survey. It is in place. Um, I will be making a stack of them to Packers. Under Woods for Bill Landry to, to pass around. Um, I'm going to try to get a bunch into Packer Meadows uh, as paper copies. I've sent it to Carriage Town. It's on. It should be on the Newton cable station. And I discovered that I no longer have access to post things on the home page of the town website. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to bury it on the planning board page because it's technically a selectman. Um, it's a town wide. It's not specifically a planning board item. So I have to get that book to the selectman's. You know anybody? Excuse me? <laughs> I said, you know anybody? <laughs> I'm not making any comment. But that's hopefully going to be, that'll, that'll be out most of this month. Yep. One of the things that I caution only from years in education is the end of August, probably like the second week of September would be a better start point, simply because 
the end of August, you know, you would, there's all sorts of parents that are going to be flooded with stuff for school. So I will say, having a, a kid in school myself, I like to do several waves of outreach for any survey because sometimes you're catching folks that might only live here in the summer. Not that you have a big seasonal population um, in noon, but you do have some. So sometimes catching that before people maybe head back to their um, non-seasonal home can also, so doing a couple of waves of it, that's sort of why it's at the end of August into September. But yeah, the, the parents being overwhelmed and people sort of getting back into their fall routine can be a big trigger too, so. So basically I need about 45 minutes on your agenda at the next meeting to talk about housing. Okay. <laughs> I don't think we have a choice, so. It's okay. You got it. You do have a choice. We could punt it out, but I think it'd be a good opportunity to do it. When's our next meeting? The 27th. Yeah. Well, uh, after that. Sorry, I'm just thinking. Uh, uh, July. July 11th. Okay. I was making sure it didn't fall on the week of the 4th. Well, actually, the fourth is a Tuesday, so that 27, okay. And actually, on that note, I won't be here on July 11th. Okay. So. I have a new applicant application to send you that will be on the Okay. Uh, but it's just a, a non-retail home-based business. Okay. Anything else? Okay. 7.50, what is it, 50? Two. Two. Meeting adjourned. Say am. Thank you. Say no more. Night all. Good job, everybody.